Lays is returning to the primetime Super Bowl spa with a new commercial for the first time in 17 years. Dynamic Hollywood duo Seth Rogen and Paul Rudd will be starring in the primetime spot, and they both join me now. Welcome, guys. Hi. Hi there. <laughs> Seth, I don't want to give the commercial away, but it does throw viewers for quite the unexpected loop. What was the inspiration behind it? Um... <laughs> I mean, we were really just kind of making ourselves laugh and trying to think of something that we thought would be funny and interesting and maybe stand out a little bit. Um, you know, the framework of kind of reminiscing and um, talking about all these memories that, you know, these ladies had been there for in our past was kind of uh, the jumping off point. And um, yeah, I think, uh, you know, in an attempt to just uh, you know entertain ourselves and others we thought of uh, what what uh, where could this go and 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 we landed where we landed <laughs> and now paul you you knew what to expect you've done a super bowl spot with seth in the past you guys are longtime friends work together quite often but what made you jump on this opportunity and do you guys have anything else in the works together um I don't know if we have anything in the. I'd look, look. We are. Uh, I think we Seth and I really like working, you know, with one another. And uh, I, I, I don't think we have anything in the works right now. But that could change. Maybe yeah. it'll change on this Zoom call. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, uh, yeah, the, I mean, when this when this thing came around, it was kind of a no brainer. I mean, I love potato chips and I love Seth Rogen. I mean, what, <laughs> what better combo than win -win. that? Now? <laughs> a win-win, exactly. Now we are young. We are young finance. So I do want to dive into the numbers a bit here. So, guys, an ad spot for these huge primetime Super Bowl commercials typically run about six and a half million dollars for a thirty-second spot. Now, this latest commercial is one minute long, so that's a whole lot of money. So, for Seth here, what sort of pressure did you feel to make it stand out, like you said, among the other commercials? And how is this far different than producing a film? Um. I mean, it's a lot different than producing a film. Uh, the, I'd say, yeah, when dealing with a company like Lay's versus a, weirdly, people who produce films for a living seem to not like producing things to the degree that people who make potato chips for a living love producing things and and true awesome. yeah like we had a lot more creative freedom and resources um and also than, like kind of collaboration they were all yeah. on board with like what do you think of this and, and and then when we were filming this it was super fun and funny yeah overall enthusiasm movie studios generally have an attitude like like they don't want to be making movies they don't want they you you should consider your Yourself lucky for giving for being given the opportunity to produce the product that they need um and that's not at all how this felt this was great <laughs> this felt really uh it felt nice they felt really psyched to have us there which is not generally how a movie studio makes you feel <laughs> so a warm welcoming from the lace team for yeah. sure <laughs> Now, I do want to, you know, switch topics a little bit. You also co-wrote this script with the Lays team alongside Evan Goldberg, Seth, your longtime partner, longtime friend there. But I want to jump topics a little bit because you also recently became business partners with him when you co-founded Houseplan back in 2019. What would you say is your biggest lesson since you started your own venture in the cannabis space? Um... I mean, I think it's a new, uh, it's an entirely new business and an entirely new space. And I think um, just being very aware of that is something that I try to uh, instill in the team is that like, there really is no precedent for what we're doing. There are things from other industries that maybe we can kind of take indicators from, but there's never been a moment exactly like this. And so to, kind of really embrace that attitude and uh, embrace that we're doing something new and different and not try to rely too heavily on what other industries have done um in the past with with kind of building their uh you know brand or whatever yeah so a whole new a whole new roadmap essentially yeah. for the cannabis space for you and i want to you know go on that note paul and by the way those two things combined are not so new for seth yeah, exactly. Yeah. You've been a long time supporter in the game, haven't you? Yeah. And I would argue potato chips play a role in all that. <laughs> okay, good to know. Noted. Writing that one down. Stay golden, Seth. <laughs> <laughs> now, from potato chips to sweets, Paul, you also have your own venture. You co-founded Samuel Sweet Shop in Rhinebeck, New York. A quick shout out. I am a Marist College graduate, so I've been 
quite a few times. All we right. saw this past pandemic really take a toll on small businesses across the nation and across the world. What sort of impact did COVID have on Samuel Sweet Shop and how did you guys have to pivot? Well, uh, you know, because we uh, serve coffee and food, we were an essential business and the community really rallied around the store. But um, I think this was the case in a lot of small towns, which was really nice is that uh, the community really rallied around a lot of the small businesses as much as they could um, and came together and started trying to do fundraisers for a lot of the businesses that stayed open. I think a lot of people bought gift certificates for uh, restaurants and things like that. And the town of Rhinebeck was, uh, they were amazing, not just to, to our store, um, and we retained our staff. We paid. We we tried to do everything possible, and and, and um, I don't think it would have worked without you know the entire community's support. And thankfully, the town was able to withstand these last few years. I think as as best they could. Yeah, and another hot topic that we're covering here at Yahoo Finance is definitely the streaming wars that are ongoing seems like for good now. So I'd love to get both of your takes really quickly on what sort of opportunity have platforms like Netflix and Amazon, Hulu, HBO Max, given Hollywood and Hollywood actors and producers in particular, you know, Paul, I'll, I'll let you go first. Well, I mean, it's created a lot more content and as a result, I mean, many more jobs. Um, so, you know, that's been Great, and not just for actors, but for everybody, you know, working on crews and all of that uh, has been has been great and challenging to try and figure out how to make all of that work during a pandemic. But I think that they've done an admirable job. You know, at the same time, it's there now. Just there's just so much stuff that uh, I, I, like I don't even there are shows and I don't even know what they are. I don't know how to watch them. <laughs> um, I don't know, and so it's like all a bit deafening. And, uh, and, you know, so th that's, I think that's still being kind of figured out, but it can be a little noisy, I think. And Seth, how about you? Yes, I very much agree with all that. And um, yeah, I think from the creative side, it's, it's interesting. I think, you know, um, when I was starting, you know, these studios and stuff were much smaller and I think less accountable to like corporate giants, you know what I mean? And um, and in some ways, there's something that is nice, uh, that is an unexpected kind of bonus about now working for these companies that are held accountable to these corporate giants, is that they just have to release things at a certain time. And even if it costs them way more money <laughs> to release them at that time, they will do it, which is not how generally a lot of like production worked. Like often a movie studio or TV studio would be like, well, we wanted it to come out in May, but it'll be way too expensive to have it come out in May. And so we'll have it come out, you know, in January instead of spending more money. But these big companies now like are accountable to have material be released in May. And if we're like, it's going to cost way more money to have it released in May, they'll be like, we will pay it. We need it to come out in May. And that actually is like, it's interesting. Like we are plugged into this like wheel that can't stop spinning now at times with these big streamers. Um, and that's not how traditional studios were. They were wheels that could very easily stop spinning at any moment um, and would love to remind you of that fact. Um, and now, yeah, there's something nice about kind of being on like an unstoppable train at times because. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's also, you know, I, I think because of the competition and the fact that there are so many shows and audiences are pretty savvy and they demand yeah. something new and, and, they, and quality uh, is important. It feels like yeah. so more so than ever before. So a lot of these, you know, they 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 are on these deadlines. They will spend the money, but their their interest in making their shows or their movies or whatever it is they're doing be really good, yeah, uh, seems to be heightened. For sure, I'd say over these last few years, we've had more resources and less oversight, <laughs> um, okay. like with some of these streaming things we've been doing than than the years previous. You know. Uh, All right. Well, we're looking forward to much more content from the both of you, that's for sure. So excited to keep in touch on that front. And I, I have to ask, you're both obviously in LA often. The Super Bowl is happening there. Who are you guys rooting for? 
Um, I'm going to say the Bengals for one reason and one reason only is like when I was a kid, uh, I just thought the name Boomer Esiason was cool. And so <laughs> I had uh, a Cincinnati Bengals poster on my wall, even though I have not or never have been a, a, a football fan at all. But, okay, uh, I, Paul? but yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm rooting for the Rams um, because I would think it would be cool to see Matt Stafford go from Detroit for so many years to uh winning a Super Bowl. Plus I'm a you know I'm a diehard Chiefs fan and the Bengals beat us twice this year and it's I'm not over it. Okay. All right. So we'll see who wins. Definitely a competition between the both of you, but we're definitely looking forward to this latest commercial. That's for sure. So thank you once again, Seth. I will say, I will say this though. I do like a lot of those players on that Bengals team. I would be psyched. Okay. The, I would be psyched for <laughs> the town of Cincinnati, but I'm still, I'm, I, I, I think it'd be cool to see the Rams. All right. Seth Rogan, Paul Rudd. Thank you both so much. Thank you.